Daryl, first of all, um, this has been a, a pretty tough sequence of games. Results probably not gone as well as you would have wanted to. How have the players responded? How have you and your staff responded to that on the training field? I think it's keeping it positive. I'm a half full sort of person. I look at it and people look four defeats in a row. You can't get out, out of that fact. But then I put it into context and look at it with my staff. You know, we lose a game at Newport with no centre forward. I'd imagine there's a lot of managers up in the country are to win games without a centre forward. And obviously Brentford becomes a, a Premier League team, which is, as we know, a tough task. And there's the Swindon game, we're down to 10 men for half a game. And then the other night, I thought we deserved to win. So, yeah, you know, without without getting too sort of carried away with it, it's just back to work, back to business. We're halfway through the season. Uh, I'd like to be on a few more points, if, if I'm honest with you. But if you look at the, the certain, and I know most clubs have got predicaments, but what we've had to go through over the last couple of months has, has been quite a lot. You know, key players out, COVID, a lot of things can go into a mix. New signings coming in, the, uh, you know, everybody's settling it down. So I'm pretty pleased with the group. I'm pleased with the group and I'm pleased where we will be heading. I feel confident in that. Like I said, so uh, it's about turning another good performance in on Saturday at, at Leighton Orient. It is a results-driven business, though, and in the context of both this season and when you first came, how tough is this sequence of results for you? Because you've not had this so far this year. So it's water off a duck's back. Plenty of experience. It, it, it is what it is. You uh, you can't dwell on things. Like I said, you reset. You go the next game. That's what you do. It's quite comfortable for me. I think when you're when you're at a club like ours, a special club, a great club with a big fan base, I don't get carried away in the emotions of it all when I'm winning, and I don't get carried away with the emotions of it all when I'm losing. You know, it's about getting getting it right, working away, getting one or two back, all the bits and pieces that come in to be to 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 be competitive in what's a really competitive league. It's, it is what it is. There's, there's 16, 17 teams that think they can get out of League 2. There's, there's a hell of a lot of teams in League 2 that think they should be in the champ in League 1. It doesn't happen like that. You've got to, you've got to ride storms. You've got to ride a little bit of, bit of uh, times when things aren't going well for n numerous reasons why that, why that may be. But we'll be, we'll be looking to kick on second half of the season, all to play for. And I'm excited about it. Forest Green apart, it is still a pretty tightly condensed league, isn't it? So, you know, it's not like you're out of touch with anything that where you want it to be. It is, and, and you know, even Forest Green and their management team are telling you they, they, they ain't away and gone. You know, they, they're on a very, very good, strong position. But it's a tough... This division, you can quickly go and lose 3-4 and you can quickly go and win 5-6 that we've shown and other teams have shown that are on good runs now. It's got all to play for this second half of the season, so... We are disappointed with the results, obviously, but we're not disappointed in where we think we'll be heading and uh, hopefully that's in the right direction with a bit of rub of the green as well, which you, you always need. And um, Miss Tom Conlon on Tuesday night, Achilles injury. What's the latest on him? Yeah, we've had it scanned. He's going for an assessment tomorrow to see a specialist and, and we'll know more after tomorrow. Uh, to be fair to Tom, he's been playing at 75-80%, wanting to put his body on the line when he has. And, uh, you know, probably not maximising his performance, but that's what he is. He, he loves he loves his club, loves his club, loves loves the, to be out there, giving the best for the teammates, a proper leader. And uh, hopefully he won't be out too long. Even at 75% fit, I suppose you want him out there, don't you, for I what he listen, brings? I want all my best players out there, to be honest with you, but that's not the case, is it? He's, he's, he's finding ways, bedding in new players because of the problems we've had in our strike force uh, for, the, for the majority of the... The last two, three months, and we're just trying to find solutions to problems. We're not here to cry and weep about it. Everyone has their own problems. We're just looking for the solutions to, to make sure that we can get on that winning run, which I think this side's capable of doing. How have those new players bedded in now? Some of them, most of them, had a couple of games under their belt. Now, what have you made of them? Fantastic, real good feel about the place. We, we build a siege mentality in the team. Done it from, from day dot. I do it every club I build in. We we uh, we got good spirit in there. We keep working away. The new lads fit into it. I mean, they they love it. They love the environment. You go and speak to those, speak to those individual players themselves. They'll tell you what we're about, and uh, we uh, we like that culture that we set at the club. And it's a it's a hard working culture, but it's uh, we want it to be a winning culture. I'm going to ask now. You're going to hate me for this. Any more? Any more? Any more for any more? Uh, listen, no, not not as as we you put the microphone in my. Head, but we we're working very hard to to get 
two or three over the line before the end of the window. I, I will ask about one specific. Would you look at a goalkeeper being as you didn't have one on the bench? Look at, the I, I look at all options at the, at the pitch. All options at the pitch and uh, we'll, we'll see how things develop. Uh, aiden has got a chance now to kind of stake a claim. I know you've picked always the, the right team for the right game, but he's got a chance now with without a sub-keeper on the bench now to really stake a claim to be number yeah, one. Yeah, he has because of a player's stupidity, which... Uh, which happens in, in, in football sometimes and uh, Aidan has that opportunity to uh, step, step, like you said, take his claim, perform well. Uh, and he had one shot to do the other day and unfortunately he was in the back of the net, wasn't it? So, uh, but his, uh, his kicking was good, his composure was good. So uh, hopefully Aidan can be a really quality keeper. He's, he's got some real good good skill sets in, in his locker and we're looking for him to grow and, and seize the opportunity. What is the thinking beyond not having a sub goalkeeper? Because a lot of a lot of clubs might even just stick a youth team player on there. So why didn't you? Oh, quite simply, I don't think they're up to standard at the minute. To be honest with you, and Joe's injured. The more right. experienced youth team goalie, so and they've got to get to a standard where where I think they, they deserve to be on the bench, and uh, and that's not the case. But oh, go back 20, 30 years, we had three subs. They weren't ever a goalie, yeah. was it? Listen, it, it is what it is. Uh, sometimes you get caught out with it, sometimes you don't. But I, I've rolled with a uh, no goal on the bench when I've got seven subs. I've rolled with one when they've got five subs. So it's more for you guys to get a bit <laughs> like, oh, no, nah, there's no goalie on the bench. Yes, he can bite you in the backside, but I won't be losing too much sleep. We have to we have to just focus, and hopefully that don't kick me in the ghoulies on, on Saturday. Have you got an outfield player, though, in mind? Yeah, you fell. Oh, God, no, that's, that's, that's even worse than a real goalkeeper. <laughs> yeah. um, in terms of the game, though, you had a, a pretty exciting game against Lake Nori, and they've got a pretty good home record as well. Aside from the, the context of the match, what are you expecting the atmosphere to be like? It'd be a good atmosphere. It'd be a good atmosphere. I think they're, they're a team that are more than capable of getting in the top seven like we are. Like there is 12, 13 teams that can get in the top seven, and it'll be, it won't be decided on Saturday, that's for sure. We want to be competitive down there, like you said, a good home record, but we'll be giving it our best shot. Lovely, thank right. you. Donald, obviously, as you say, uh, the performance on Tuesday was what you wanted. You showed the desire, you showed everything in the park, and you didn't quite get the results. So there was a lot of positives to take from the game, apart from, you said, yeah. you didn't get the three points. But it is a results business, George, it is. Uh, but the performance, I think, warranted a win. Uh, I watched it back, players have watched it back. It was one of those, you know, the, even their management team thought they was fortunate, you know, but I'd rather be a fortunate manager and be on a 1 0 win, to be honest with you. I thought they defended very well, they, they blocked a lot of shots, goal up, goal bound shots. It wasn't to be, and uh, you get those games through the course of the season. But like I, like I always keep saying to people, you, you judge at the end of the season. These are, these are just things that happen through the course of the season. We're quite comfortably, and I, I feel quite comfortable in the fact that the group is a very, very good group. It'll get stronger as well, and I think we can comfortably get ourselves on a good run from some point from now to the end of the season. That's how I feel. You know, people might disagree with that, but we'll see. But he tells you about how far you've progressed with your team. That the opposition are setting up so deep to defend them. All right, you've already paid tribute to the way Salford did and their manager Gary Bowyer and the way he did it. Is that something that you're finding now because of the form you are in or with the team? You are an exciting attacking team. Uh, listen, I don't really care what, what other sort of teams do. It's all about what we do. Uh, what I will say is I think if you play that game ten times, you win it nine on the performance, whether that be a rub of the green, bit of bet finishing. However you look at it, the statistics of, of the game tells you that. That's football. How many games do you go through the course of the season where you deserve to win and don't get anything out of the game? And that, that, that happens. And it's, for me, it's not about that. It's about the mental state of the players, making keeping those positive keeping the environment exactly what it should be and as it is and that's, that's the way we focus. But finally you go back to Lake Norian since you've proved in the past that you can get back on the horse and you are capable of doing that against a side that as you've already alluded to are going to be challenging possibly the end of the, uh, the season, Darrell. Yeah, it's, an, uh, it's uh, halfway through the season we are. We've got 69 points to play for. There's a hell of a lot of points to play for. It's going to be twists and turns. I'm just, I just feel that the group was going to get better and better and certainly if we get one or two of our better players back as well, we're a real force. People don't, I think we're well respected in the division. You can, you can hear other managers' comments about when we're playing them and, and what we're here about and uh, we want to make it a very difficult afternoon for Leighton Orient against a good manager, a good team. Thank you, Doug. You mentioned your better players there, Darrell, maybe coming back. How's Jamie Proctor? Can you just give us a few He's on the grasses in running, but that's... 
you know, building up his rehab. Uh, so no, no, no short-term fix on that, to be honest with you. But he's, it's nice to see him with his boots on, running around in the grass. So uh, it'll take how long it takes, really, Peggy, to be honest. But we're hoping to have all our players back as quickly as possible, yeah. preferably. And just going back to Tuesday, Connor Hall had to come off. What's the latest with Connor? We're, we're very hopeful for Saturday. Right, OK. Very yeah. hopeful for Saturday, yeah. Only my opinion, I thought Connor's played well in his first two games. Just tell us how pleased you've been with, with him. Yeah, the, I mean, how long do you give players to settle into a new club? I don't think any of the decisions, well, I don't think, I know that every decision that made that made in this window the best for the football club, we, we've got to keep moving it forward. People might want to jump on that the results haven't been good since we've done that. Nah, ain't changing anything. We, we're making the right moves for the club moving forward. Short-term fix, no. You know, we, you know, everybody wants the short-term fix. I, I'm, I'm trying to build a football club. You know, we're trying to build a football club with a better squad base. And I think if you, if you remember, right, I discussed it early doors at two, three windows minimum, minimum to to tidy it up to get it exactly how you want it to be. Patience in football is a virtue, but I, you know, we're really enjoying it and really building new players coming in. And Connor's one of those, bag, isn't he? Yeah. He's one of those that's come in and, and done well in his first couple. And you just talked about Tom Conley. Just from the perspective of a footballer, he's played when he's not quite 100% fit. Is that, can that be frustrating for a player when maybe you're getting criticised for not playing as well as you were earlier in the season? If you see what I'm Yeah, doing. no, I, I get that. But listen, I'm never going to have a go, a go at our fans. At the end of the day, they, they come, they assess, they pay the money, they watch the 95 minutes of the game. There's a lot of things that go into that game and why, why the teams pick, why people are putting bodies online. But, it, but people don't see that and I understand that because I'm a football fan myself and they don't see that they don't know Tom Conlon's only 75-80% I'm not going to come out to the press and say Tom Conlon's 75-80% you know struggling with Achilles because people will be whacking his Achilles He's all I know is is that I think our fans would be very appreciative that players want to put the bodies on the line not just Tom Conlon by the way want to put the bodies on the line to do well for the football club and it's about always has been always will be again a team that the fans can be proud and support. And I think for the majority of the season, we've done that. We've had some disappointments, but we're doing that.